Hello, friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Before we take you to your favorite Sports History Network show, just want to tell you a little bit about some merch that you can pick up that represents your favorite SHN podcast. So far, there's t-shirts, coffee mugs, and even books from some of the authors that do podcasts right here on SHN. Who could buy something better than that than have the history right from the, the gentleman that you hear talking about it? But we also are adding things each and every day. And where's that store, may you ask? Well, it's at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. Up at the top, there is the SHN. SHN merch button. Click on that. It'll take you right to the store and you can be representing your favorite podcast and show the world that, hey, on the swag that I'm using, it's the headquarters of Sports Yesteryear, Sports History Network, and my favorite podcaster, the Sports History Network store. Shop there today. The boxers have been given their instructions. The seconds are out. The crowd is ready for another edition of Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing. With your presenter, the boxing historian, Greg Rashid. Well, I want to say sweaty cup to everyone out there, which means hello and tie. This is Greg Rashid, your presenter for another edition of the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Heard at your convenience, wherever you are on the internet, wherever you are, be it on Apple, be it on my channel, Nourished by History on YouTube, wherever you are. But, you know, some folks listen also every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Mountain Time on KUHSDenver.com. In Colorado, created by the one and only Henry Archuleta. And I just want to say hi to all my friends in the Colorado region, but hi to everyone all over the world. We're going to have another fun show today here on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. And as I always say, this is your show. This is your show. So you can be a promoter like so many people have been on the show and create fights. And this is for, you know, for people who are new to the program. What we do is simulate fights on here. We use various platforms. I use uh, Title Bout 2 PC Game. And also I use, uh, and I'm going to be using this one today, Legends of Boxing PC Game. And, you know, and also I have used some card games, the Glory Days Boxing. There's so many great games out there if you're a boxing aficionado, if you love boxing like I do. So today we're going to be using Legends of Boxing PC Game. And the fight we're going to have is a four-rounder. Now, who would only who would have a four-rounder? But the one and only Butterbean, who's the king of the four-rounders. So we're going to have him today fight four rounds, and he's going to fight Ed Too Tall Jones from the Dallas Cowboys. So that should be a trip and a half. But this show, you know, as I always say, this is all about theater of the mind, your imagination. You know, this is all what if. I know a lot of you. Boxing aficionados sit back and you say, I wonder what would happen if Muhammad Ali fought Mike Tyson or what would happen if Joe Lewis fought Larry Holmes. Well, this is what this show is about. Just the imagination, just sit back and just imagine. And just, you know, just have a good time. So what I want you to do right now is to, and before I say that, you can be the promoter of this show. This is your show. So be like other folks and please join in wherever you listen to the podcast and Comment and say, I want to promote the show. And also go to my Patreon site. Look for Nourished by History. Then look for Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing. And become a Patreon. A dollar a month. I mean, it's nothing. You know, whatever you can contribute. Because we got to keep the lights on. we got to keep everything going. Electricity, everything going to make these shows the best as possible. Get a better mic. A little bit of everything. And we're working on the mic here. You know, I'm trying to do something with it. But anyway, also you can go to my buymeacoffee.com site look for Nourished by History Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast and make a donation a dollar whatever you can do just to keep us going here but we you know really would be greatly appreciated but we're going to get to the main event right now it's going to be Butterbean versus Two Tall Jones so get your favorite beverage sit back and relax and enjoy the show as commentator today is going to be the one and only Knockout Nigel. So let's get to the main event right now. Cheers. This is Knockout Nigel, 
coming to you from the Texarkana State Fair in Arkansas. We are in a converted barn that seats 850 people. They are here to witness, if you want to call it so, a boxing match between two blokes who are more mix-matched than a pair of brown shoes with a black tuxedo. This event, although I would call it a farce, pits Eric Esch, a.k.a. Butterbean, against Ed Jones, a.k.a. Too Tall. I will refer to these fellows by their nicknames for the duration of this commentary. The size differential is astonishing. Butterbean may be 5 feet 10 inches and weighs 310 pounds. He is known as the king of the four-rounders. He started fighting in tough man tournaments. Former Dallas Cowboys football all-pro player Too Tall, meanwhile stand at 6 feet 9 inches and weighed in at 275 pounds. Butterbean almost fell backwards as he gazed up at Too Tall. This will be a four-round fight. Given Butterbean's weight, I have serious doubts he could go longer than four rounds. The judges for this event all from the entertainment industry, they are Latoya Jackson, Carrot Top, and Jose Canseco. I guess they will do anything for a buck. The referee in charge is Frank Stallone. Stallone will be autographing copies of his new CD after the match. I need a double sip of the bubbly as the cowbell sounds for round one. The fighters meet at ring centre. Butterbean throws a roundhouse left hook that connects to Too Tall's jaw. Too Tall rushes Butterbean like they are on the line in football, pushing him into the ropes. Too Tall jars Butterbean with a right uppercut that snaps his head back. Butterbean bounces off the ropes and lands two left jabs. It appears that those jabs have caused Too Tall to have a bloody lower lip. Too Tall fires back a right uppercut. Butterbean blocks a left jab and throws his own left jab that connects to the bloody lower lip. What I cannot understand is why Too Tall is fighting in a crouch. He has made himself an easy target for Butterbean's jabs by doing so. He should take advantage of his enormous height. Butterbean throws a combination to Too Tall's stomach, then goes upstairs with a solid right hook. Jones staggers back into the ropes. As Butterbean moves in, Too Tall clinches him. Too Tall lifts Butterbean off the mat. The referee Stallone immediately issues a stern warning to Too Tall. Butterbean smiles and throws a left hook to the temple as the bell sounds to end round one. From my ringside seat, I would give that round to Butterbean. He may be overweight, but Butterbean is a skilled fighter. Too Tall looks like he is still trying to learning the boxing trade. He has the Charlo brothers, Jermel and Jermal, in his corner as trainers. Hopefully he will listen to their advice as the bell sounds for round two. Too Tall rushes Butterbean again like this is third and ten, and he is rushing to get the quarterback. They wrestle into the neutral corner. The ref breaks the fighters. Jones immediately clinches Butterbean again before Butterbean can throw a punch. If this is the strategy the Charlo brothers have come up with for Too Tall, this promises to be a long, boring fight. I don't think I could stand more rounds of this. The crowd seems to agree, as some have left this converted barn to get in line for the Ferris wheel. That will be more exciting. Out of the break, Butterbean headbutts then pushes too tall. He is issued a warning from the ref. The fighters go to ring centre. Too tall throws a straight right that connects to Butterbean's nose. Butterbean returns with a left hook that opens up the cut on too tall's lower lip again. Butterbean throws a combination that snaps too tall's head back. Butterbean dips down and throws a left hook that is below the belt of too tall. Too tall sits on the mat in pain. The ref goes over to Butterbean's corner men. They are furious. The ref has taken a point away from Butterbean for a low blow. Given the size difference, I am surprised Butterbean has not thrown more below the belt punches. Too Tall is leaning on the ropes, grimacing. He waves to the ref, though that he can continue. Jones throws a left jab that connects, then clinches Butterbean again. The crowd is booing, and more folks are beginning to leave, as the bell sounds to end, round two. A match like this one will make me return across the pond, never to announce fights in the States again.
I will take another sip of the bubbly as the bell sounds for round three. Too Tall comes out bouncing on his toes. His stance is much taller to begin the round. He connects with a double left jab, followed by a right hook to the head that causes Butterbean to step back. Too Tall throws a left jab that Butterbean blocks. Butterbean counters with a right to the rib cage, followed by a left jab to Too Tall's lower lip that is bleeding again. Too Tall shots a right jab that connects, followed by a left hook to the stomach. Whatever instructions the Charlotte brothers gave Too Tall between rounds is working as he actually looks like a professional in this round. Butterbean digs a left hook to the body and follows with a left cross to the face that has Too Tall on his heels. Before Butterbean can continue, Too Tall clinches him. On the break, Butterbean fires a combo that connects to Too Tall's lower lip. The lip has become a bloody mess. It appears to be hanging off his face. Too Tall stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with Butterbean and lands a solid left upper cut. Butterbean appears stunned by that blow. Too Tall misses with a wild right cross that causes him to fall into the ropes. That was an amateurish punch attempt. Butterbean has stopped in his tracks, doubling over with laughter as the bell sounds to end the round. Until that last attempt, Too Tall looked like a real pro in the third round. I would give him that round, the first he has won in my humble opinion. I don't know how the judges will view it. Looking over at the judges' faces, I haven't seen that much plastic since I was at the recycling centre in Liverpool last year. I need a sip of the bubbly as we begin the fourth and last round. This fight is a four-rounder, but it seems like it has been an eternity. The fighters touch gloves at ring centre. Butterbean throws a left hook to the stomach. Too tall counters with a left jab. He throws another left jab and a left cross that causes swelling under Butterbean's left eye. Butterbean bobs and weaves, moving around too tall to his left. Butterbean is certainly nimble for his size. Butterbean throws a combination that opens up the lower lip again. The blood is streaming down too tall's jaw. Butterbean connects with a right hook to the body. He follows with a combo that snaps too tall's head back. The Charlotte brothers are telling Too Tall to cover up. Instead, he bull rushes Butterbean, pushing him into the ropes above press row. Too Tall connects with a weak left jab. Butterbean blocks Too Tall's attempt at a right hook. Butter is fighting off the ropes and connects with his own right hook, followed by a left uppercut. Too Tall steps back. He appears to have been hurt by that uppercut. Butterbean steps in and is met with a Too Tall right uppercut. That shot sends Butterbean into the ropes. Butterbean bounces off the ropes and lands a left hook and left cross that stagger Too Tall. Too Tall's legs are doing a shimmy dance. Butterbean moves in, sensing the kill. He is met with a left cross that stuns Butterbean as the bell mercifully sounds to end this match. My sense is that Butterbean won the fight, but I admit that Too Tall made it interesting in the last two rounds. Let's hear what the judges have to say. Latoya Jackson called it 39, 37 for Butterbean. Carrot Top scored the fight 38, 38 a draw. What fight was he looking at? Now we will hear from Jose Canseco for the final verdict. Hopefully he will not be affected by any roid rage. Canseco has scored it 40, 37 for the winner, Butterbean. The thirty-five or so people left in this barn are applauding the decision. To say this was entertaining is an understatement. It had its moments, but it isn't something I would make a habit of covering. I would like to thank those listeners that tunes in to this event. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider becoming a promoter of a fight on a future podcast. Wherever you listen to this podcast, Please remember to leave a comment and subscribe to the show. The crew that put on these podcasts are a fun lot. So please consider joining us as a promoter. Again, my name is Knockout Nigel. It has been my pleasure to be your announcer today. Cheers.
Well, that was a little different there, a little Butterbean versus uh, Ed Two Tall Jones. Um, hope you enjoyed that. You know, from time to time, we'll have some little special uh, matches beside the more serious. But how can we be serious when this is all imagination and fun? But uh, I might even do some wrestling on here at some point. But you got to tune in to, to hear that. You got to do that. Well, we're going to, um, before I go on, I also want to say, too, that we do talk about what's going on in the world of boxing. I, you know, before I got on the air here today, this being um, March the 3rd, I got some horrible news about the fight that was scheduled in Puerto Rico between Amanda Serrano versus uh, Nina Minky. And this was the first time, and, I, and I'm a big Serrano fan, first of all. And it was the first time she was fighting in Puerto Rico, her hometown, her main event. But she had something happen where she was getting her hair done on Thursday. And there was some chemical they used that got in her eyes and burned part of her skin on her scalp. And the chemical was so bad in her eyes that they had to postpone the fight. And, I, you know, she was in the ring, you know, prior, you know, when they were announcing the fight would not happen. And she was just bawling, and, and she was just so apologetic. And I got to give props to Jake Paul who promoted this. A lot of people don't like him, but, you know, he, to me, he, he, you know, he's all right. He's all right to me. And he said after the fight that he will give back all the money to all the participants and the, uh, all the uh, folks that came to see the fight because they wanted to see the main event. And anyone that wants to get their money back, he said 100%. So that, that's a great thing to do. But hopefully, Amanda will be fighting again soon. Everything will be cleared up. But it was a... I'd never heard... You know, it was something that very was serious for her because she's a warrior. For her to stop that fight and then the doctors to say the same thing, it, it was very serious. So hopefully, she'll be on the men and we'll see her fight again very, very soon. But we're going to do something right now. A little, you know, a little different because, you know, from time to time, I will... You know, go way back in the past. I go in the past with some of these fighters, but I like to use some old radio things. I'm going to do right now. Uh, This is a radio show from 1945. And it's about a fighter who was... This... It was out of a comic strip. In the early 30s, there was this comic strip called Joe Palooka. And he was the heavyweight champion of the world in this comic strip. And this is 1932 when I think this comic strip started. And I learned about it as a kid in the 60s and early 70s because they still were putting it in the Washington Post. You know, I lived in Washington, D.C. And, you know, I would look at that thing religiously because I love boxing. But Joe Palooka was the heavyweight champion of the world in the comics back in 1932. And keep in mind, in 32... Black fighters were not allowed to fight for the heavyweight championship. It wasn't until Joe Lewis came along a number of years later that he beat James Braddock and became heavyweight champion of the world. But prior to that, they only had for black fighters the colored championship of the world. And that's a story in itself we'll get to sometime. But I'm going to play right now this radio show from 1945 about Joe Palooka. And Palooka, you know, you could describe the two fighters I just had on the uh, what if fight between Butterbean and Two Tall Jones as being Palookas, you know. But Joe Palooka, this will be an interesting little show to listen to. And keep in mind, I want to say this in advance. Because this is 1945 and they're talking during the height of World War II, there's going to be some politically un- incorrect uh, statements made, especially about the Japanese. So please forgive me, but this is all historic. You can't hide the past. You can't hide it at all. But I want you to hear this. I won't be showing, you know, I'll be presenting from time to time some other Joe Palooka or radio shows on here. But let's hear this. This is called the 15th round, and it is Joe Palooka. Hope you enjoy that on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Over 60 million people follow the career of the world's most lovable character, Joe Palooka, in the daily Sunday and Army papers. 
It is more than four years since Joe laid away his ring title to enlist in the Army, but he's earned a more important title, Champion Among Men. But now before we meet Joe and his pals, here is Joe's creator, Ham Fisher. I want to introduce the new Joe Palooka program with as, just as few words as possible. I assure you that I have picked the tops in radio as my associates, and the show will be under my direct supervision. We will endeavor at all times to have it keep the high standard that I have always tried to maintain in the newspapers. Thank you. Thank you, Ham Fisher. And now, let's swing down to the South Pacific to catch up with Joe Palooka and his buddy, Jerry Leamy, who have been making a special service tour of the island bases. They have been suddenly ordered to an unidentified headquarters base where they await further orders. Well, let's break in on them as they report to the commanding officer. You know, Joe, we've been on ten of these islands, and I ain't seen one of them hula girls yet. Has somebody been kidding me, or did they only have them dames with the grass skirts in the movies? Uh, I don't know, Jerry. Uh, what interests me now is uh, why we were ordered to report here. Do you think maybe we're going to see some action at last? Uh, they probably just want you to box an exhibition here. Oh, gee, I really hope it isn't that. Jerry, I just wish that I had a gun in my hand again. Palooka, leave me. Colonel Jenkins will see you now. Step this way. A private Leamy reporting, sir. A private Palooka reporting, sir. At ease, men. Sit down. Certainly is a pleasure to know you, Joe. You too, Leamy. Joe, I saw you fight Schmelling. Sure was plenty of action that night. But let's get down to business. I guess you both want to know why you're here. Yes, sir. Well, frankly, I can't tell you. All I know is that you were ordered here by General Corman. I expect him any minute. Oh, here he is now. That is, gentlemen. How are you, Colonel? General. And this must be Joe Palooka. Very glad to meet you, Joe. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And uh, you must be Leamy. How are you? Uh, fine, sir. Thank you. I'd like to introduce Captain Tom Miller of the 3rd Airborne Division. Now, you two had better get to know the captain because you're going to be seeing a lot of him from now on. Glad to know you, Captain. I too, sir. Glad to know you, man. And now let's get down to cases. There's a vital mission to be accomplished. A mission vital to the success of the war in this theater of operations. But before I go any further, let me add that it is strictly voluntary. You don't have to go unless you want to. And it's going to be dangerous. Very dangerous. Uh, but, sir, we don't care about the danger. I mean, uh, I don't care, and I don't think Jerry does. I would like to volunteer, sir. I too, sir. Please count me in. Well, frankly, I was hoping you'd feel that way about it. Now, you two men were suggested for this mission because of your knowledge of guerrilla warfare and because of the great job you both did in Yugoslavia. Thank you, sir. It wasn't much. Before I go any further, I must stress the importance of secrecy on this mission. No one outside of this room is to know why you're here or where you're going. Is that clear? We understand, sir. Oh, and I wouldn't breed a white, sir. Now, here's the story. The invasion of this point, marked by an X, is close at hand. Just how close depends on your success on this mission. There is certain information we must gather before we complete our plans for invasion. Captain Miller here, who was formerly with the engineers, will assimilate this data. Uh, here's our code map, General. Might make the picture clearer. Oh, thank you. Now, do you see this 40-mile arc here from point Q to point Z? The high command has picked this spot for the first thrust. Now, it'll be up to you men to find the three most suitable points in that arc for landing heavy equipment. How soon do we leave, sir? Perhaps in a day or two, perhaps in a week. But consider yourself alerted as of now. I, uh, I take it you men have had some parachute training. Uh, not exactly, sir, but we uh, parachuted into Yugoslavia, and it was no trouble at all. Fine, fine. And all you'll need to do is familiarize yourselves with this map. Get to know every inch of it by heart, because we may have to destroy it if we get into trouble. Uh, Captain, I would like to suggest that you give these men some time for themselves. It may be a long while before they'll be able to relax again. Uh, if you don't mind, sir, uh, we don't feel much like relaxing. We've been relaxing ever since we left France. <laughs> you said it! Uh, I mean, yes, sir. Well, I guess that's all for now, men. We'll have another session just as soon as G2 forwards further information. Good afternoon. Good day, sir. Good afternoon, sir. It looks like this is it, Jerry. This is the chance we've been hoping for. Ah, Joe, them Japs are going to be a pushover. This is a cinch. Hey, I wouldn't say that if I was you. You shouldn't ever underestimate your enemy. Some of the folks back home have done that, but the fellows who've been through the battles can tell you better. Hey, Joe, look. What? That lieutenant. Unless my eyes is going back on me, he's heading straight for us. Yeah, I guess he is. All right, ease, men. I'm Lieutenant Jordan, special service officer for this base. 
Hey, I'd know you any place. You're Joe Palooka. I take it this is Jerry Leamy. Yes, sir. Well, I guess you're here to put on an exhibition, Joe, but I'm afraid we haven't anyone for you to fight. Oh, no, sir. We're not Excuse here. Excuse me, sir, but uh, Private Leamy means uh, we haven't had any orders yet. Oh, it's too bad we don't have a heavyweight at this base. The only man with any real boxing ability here is Corporal Woloski, and he's only a welterweight. He'd be too small for you, Joe. Yes, sir. You're right, sir. He would be. Uh, say, uh, if, if you don't mind, sir, I'd like to fight him. I'm a welterweight. Oh, I'm afraid he might be a little tough for you, Leamy. You, you see, this Woloski is sort of a hot-headed fellow once he's got the gloves on. He, he seems to lose his head whether the bout is an exhibition or not. Oh, and I'm pretty tough myself, sir. I flattened the amateur champ back in Brooklyn, and it only took two rounds. Oh, don't you worry about this Woloski, Lieutenant. With Joe second to me, I'm liable to lose my head myself and murder the bum. Well, as long as you're willing, I'll make the match. But don't say I didn't warn you. This boy's good. If I may uh, suggest, sir, uh, could you uh, arrange the match for tomorrow? Uh, since I got no opponent to fight here, we may get orders to move on any time. Well, that's kind of short notice, but I think you have something there. We'll make it for tomorrow morning around 10 hundred. I'll have it announced tonight at mess. That would be fine, sir. Oh, and, uh, Leamy, you better get a good night's sleep. Well, see you in the morning, then. Good night, sir. Now, what did you have to go and do that for, Jerry? First, you almost go and tell the lieutenant why we're really here, and then you take a match with this Wolowski after they tell you how good he is and everything. Ah, don't worry, Joe. I can handle him. Besides, it's only an exhibition. And you mustn't go around telling them fibs like how you knocked out the amateur welterweight champion. But I did knock him out. Of course, he was only the welterweight champion of the bluff, but he was still champion. Come on, let's go to mess. I want to get back to the barracks as soon as I can. Well, what's your rush? I got a right to Mom and to Nobby, and, uh, of course, to Ann Howe. Last I heard, her uh, Red Cross unit was being transferred to the Pacific. Gee, hey, Joe, wouldn't it be great if we ran into her? I'd give anything to see her. Yeah, and I bet she'd give anything to see you. She's the nut she is. Ah, oh, she's wonderful. Come on, let's go. You know, Colonel, I feel a lot easier about this mission now that Palooka and Leamy have been assigned to me. Well, you should, Captain. I don't know of two men better fitted for the job. Oh, by the way, I think you ought to send for them now so they can go over these maps G2 just sent. I already have, sir. Oh? They should be here any minute. Uh, let's spread out map 7B. This is it right here. Now, come in. At ease, men. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Men, things are happening a lot faster than I expected. I've just received a message from reconnaissance saying the weather is clearing fast. Things can't happen too fast for me, Colonel. I'm itching to get off. Well, we still have a few more plans to settle. This isn't going to be an all-army show, you know. The Navy will be working with us, and our liaison is completing details with them right now. I guess that's all for tonight. We'll have a conference in the morning, maybe our last one. Oh, by the way, Leamy, what's this I hear about you boxing an exhibition with Lowski? Well, you see, sir, I wanted to... I mean, I... If uh... I can explain, sir, uh, Private Leamy accepted the fight because they had no opponent for me. He sort of thought it would cover up our original mission if one of us put on an exhibition. And uh, I know the men here would certainly enjoy it, sir. <laughs> not a bad idea, not bad at all. I just hope you can fight, Leamy. You know, R. Wolowski is a pretty tough man. Ah, flatten a bum. I, uh, I mean, sir, he'll... Well, it ought to be a pretty good fight, sir. <laughs> Well, now you men turn in, get a good night's sleep. Good night, and don't forget to keep your guard up, Leamy. I certainly won't, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Hey, Jerry, time to get up. Oh, Michael. Oh, me, Michael. Kiss me, baby. Kiss me. Hey, now, please, Jerry, will you get up? Hey, Jerry! Ah, uh, uh, why'd you go and do that for? I was just having a most wonderful dream. Michael and me was sitting in Prospect Park. She had her arms around me, and she was just going to kiss me. And you go and wake me up. Or you could at least wait until I got kissed. Don't forget you're fighting Wolowski today. Okay, Joe. I'll be with you in a minute. Well, hurry up now. We have to see Colonel Jenkins right after breakfast. All right, let's go. Well, man, our plans have now been completed. All we're waiting for is a signal for you to take off. Now, listen closely. This is very important. You must remember the time to the exact second when you bail out. 
Your pilot will also record the time and relay it to naval operations. Uh, here's that map, Colonel. Oh, thank you, Captain. Now, exactly 96 hours after you bail out, a PT boat will be waiting in this cove right here to pick you up. That'll give you four full days to complete your mission. You see, I figured we'd need only three. The extra day is for any unforeseen incident that may pop up. Yes, that, that PT boat will stay out of sight until zero hour. Your job is to be at the rendezvous when it dashes for the cove. Uh, well, sir, uh, supposing we miss the boat. If you miss the boat, Leamy, it'll be because of Jap interception. This will mean the enemy is onto our game and he'll throw a tight net around that portion of the coast. Might be tough getting you out then. Oh, I'm sure that we can make it, sir. Well, I have the utmost confidence in you men. Now, if there's any change in details, they'll be in your sealed orders when you take off. Uh, say, Leamy, uh, looks as though it's time for you to do a little fighting on your own. I see they have the ring set up back of the hangar and the boys are all waiting. Well, I'm all shooting to go, sir. <laughs> see you at the ringside. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Ah, oh, Joey, I don't need all that bandage on me hands. Oh, you don't want to hurt him, do you? I wish you hadn't taken this fight, Jerry. <laughs> hey, you know, Joey, they must have told that bum Wolowski I said I was going to flatten him in one heat. He ain't even showed up yet. Hello, Joe. How are you feeling, Leamy? In the pink, sir. In the pink and raring to go. Oh, fine. We'll be ready to start in a few minutes. Okay. Hey, Joe. Yeah? Hey, Joe, ain't that Ray Martin? The Royals welterweight champ climbing into the ring? What's he doing here? Yeah, I think it is. And he's a real champ, too. Why, Leamy, I thought you knew. That's Ray Martin, all right, but in the Army, we know him under his real name. Corporal Ray Wolowski. He's the man you're fighting. Oh, Joey. We'll tell you about our next episode in just a moment. But first... <laughs> well, it looks as though Jerry has gone and done it again. Or has he? That all depends on what you think his chances are against the world's welterweight champion, and from the way it looks from here, a very angry welterweight champion. But ring champs have been upset before, so you'd better not miss the next Joe Palooka show when Corporal Ray Wolowski, world's 147-pound title holder, squares off against private first-class Jerry Leamy, world's amateur champion of his block in Greenfern. Don't fail to join us again, same time, same station, for the further adventures of Joe Palooka. Joe Palooka. I know that was a little different for you, and that um, it was old time radio, and that was from 1945, Joe Palooka radio show. And like I said, I apologize for some of the uh, less than politically correct uh, statements about the Japanese in that uh, podcast. But it's history; that's the history, and uh, you can't hide history. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll we'll have some other episodes of that show on the show from time to time. But I hope you enjoyed uh, the earlier uh, part of the show where we. Uh, had the Butterbean versus uh, Too Tall Jones fight. Hope you enjoyed that. As I always say, um, you can be a promoter of the show. You can be a promoter. Just give me a shout out on whatever platform you listen to this program. Just say, hey, I want to do this. And go to my Patreon site, Nourished by History, and look for Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Give us, you know, whatever you can do to donate to support the show. Keep the lights on and everything. Also, go to Buy Me a Coffee. Look for Nourished nourish by History. Easy for me to say, Nourished by History. And then look for Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. But we're going to get ready to get out of here right now. Appreciate everything you can do. And as I always say, it's Greg Rasheed, your presenter today. Go in love and go in peace. Help someone along the way. And when you get up in the morning, wake up, smile on your face. Hug yourself and say, I love myself when you look in your mirror. And if you're sight impaired, get up, hug yourself and say, I love myself. And give yourself a smile because we're all in this together. And you can't love yourself. You can't do anything. You can't love anyone. You can't do anything. 
So we are on the spear together, working to make things better. So do what you can wherever you are in whatever community you are in in the world, be it here in Bangkok, be it in Portugal, wherever you are, Morocco, Egypt, Singapore, wherever you are listening to the program, please bring some positive energy to your community, to your suburb, to your farm area, your condo, wherever you are. Do what you can because we're all in this together. So, again, this is Greg Rasheed. Go in love and go in peace. We'll see you next time on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Thanks for tuning in again to the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Please remember to comment on this podcast on whatever platform you listen to it on. And please consider becoming a promoter of the podcast. Thanks and see you next time.